Good evening, my dear brethren. You're welcome. You're welcome. Glad to have you again tonight for our house fellowship, house to house. We are, I'm going to make it short and straight to the point tonight because we have a lot of grounds to cover regarding the topic that we'll be dealing with. Uh, let's go ahead and pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again tonight for this time together. We pray that, Lord, you will minister to us. Thank you for what you did last Sunday. Thank you for your children who came to church. Thank you for everyone, for the grace, for the ability to pray. And, Father, we thank you because when we pray, we, be we believe that you hear and you answer. Lord, tonight, minister to us and let us have the liberty and the freedom to engage in our conversation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we are going to talk about how do you position yourself by serving? How do you position yourself by serving? And I'm going to read two Bible passages for you and then I would like us to go into the conversation. Number one, the Bible says that David in Acts chapter 13 verse 36, it said David, after he had served his own generation, after he had served his own generation, by the will of God, he fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. David, after he had served his generation by the will of God, he fell asleep. He served David, the great king of Israel, the, the psalmist of God, the mighty warrior, this great man who the whole the nation of Israel, the flag of Israel is called the Star of David. This great founder of Israel, you know, the Bible says that he served his generation. He was such a great man because of his serving. He was a great warrior because of his serving. He served his generation according to the will of God. And I want us tonight as we get into conversation to look at what it means to serve. Because we have developed a culture of independence. We have developed a culture where everybody thinks you are all about yourself. It's about me, me, me. I want everybody to serve me. I want everybody to look at me. I want everybody to attend to me. I want everybody to submit to me. We have not learned the value of serving by looking at our forebears, our, the leaders, the Christian leaders or the godly leaders that we've had in multiple generations. The, 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 the writer of Proverbs, the son of David, Solomon, this is what he said in Proverbs 22, verse 29. He said, do you see a man who excel at his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. He will not stand before mean men. Do you see a man who excels at his work? What does he excel doing? He excels in serving. When you serve, you will stand before kings. When you serve, your sphere of influence increases. When you serve, you become relevant to people. When you serve, you're a blessing to your community. When you serve, you are even receiving a blessing yourself because when you give, you shall be given in return. When you water others, you too will be watered in return. When you bless others, you too will be blessed in return. It may not look like it when you're doing it, but serving is important. Serving is so important that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, hear what he said. He said, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but he came to serve and to make himself a ransom for many. Serving is important. I want to challenge you today. Don't hear this message just for yourself, but I want you to hear it and try to talk to your friends, encourage your colleagues, encourage your Christian brethren to learn how to serve. Serve. You know, on Sunday we spent some time talking about uh, a guy called Joseph, a young man called Joseph. At the time he became prime minister of Egypt or the vice president of Egypt, he was only 30 years old. But from young in age, by the age of 17, he was a teenager. He was serving. He was serving his, parents, his father. He was serving the family business. He was serving. He was in the place of serving. So you see that even in the revelation, the dream that he saw, the moon and the sun bowing down before him and the stars bowing down before him, it was all about serving. They were not bowing down before him so that he alone would be pedestalized above everybody else. He alone would be elevated above everybody else. He was bow, they were bowing down before him so that he can be in a place of serving. 
And I told you, because these are the things I want us to look at for the next few minutes. Joseph served zealously in your organization. Are you serving zealously in your office, in your company, in the business in which you have found yourself, in the position in which you have found yourself? Are you serving zealously or you are serving lazily? You are serving reluctantly. You are serving complainingly. You know, some people say, well, I will only do what, uh, uh, that, what is commensurate with the amount of money I am being given. But that's not right. You know, the Bible says that it is required of stewards that a man be found faithful. The Bible says of Jesus Christ, he served so much that it was said of him that the zeal of my father's house has consumed me. My friend, in that business, I want you to serve zealously. Because you don't get promoted until you have outlived, you have, out, you have grown bigger than the position where you are right now in that business, in that company, in that organization. For some of you who come to our local church, are you serving zealously? I know people have stepped on your toes. I know people have said things about you. I know people have elbowed you in a way and in ways that are, that, are not, that are not helpful to you, that are not encouraging to you. And because of that, you have said, some of you have pulled back, but that should not be the case. Consider Jesus. Jesus, he served. And they said things about Jesus. They threw stones at Jesus. They made snide comments about Jesus, but he served. When you serve, you need to serve faithfully too. Are you faithful? And faithfulness is not about somebody watching you. It's not about some, you even giving a report to somebody. You are faithful knowing that you are serving not man, but the king of kings. The Bible says, it says, whatever your hand finds to do, you've got to do it with all your might. So my dear friends, I ask you tonight, are you serving faithfully the work that you're doing? You're a school teacher. Are you teaching those students with a sense of with, with a sense of genuine commitment, a sense of compassion, so that you can handle the ones who are erring, the ones who are errant, the ones who are uh, 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 deviants? You can handle them properly. You know, you're a manager in the office. You're a salesman. You're a retailer. Whatever you are, you've got to serve faithfully. Another thing about Joseph is that Joseph served completely. He did the work until he finished it. You know, it was said of Jesus Christ. Jesus, when he finished the work, he says it, well, before he died, he said, it is finished. Don't say, well, I have done what I can do. No, doing what you can do is not necessarily acceptable. You've got to finish the work. Because there are some of you who, for instance, you're in the office, when the office closes at 5 o'clock and at 4.30, you've packed your bag when you still have 30 minutes of work to do. Or at 5 o'clock, you were given an assignment to do. You've not finished the assignment, but at 5 o'clock, you say, well, my time is up. I've got to go out. You are behaving like a vendor. But in the kingdom of God, you're not a vendor. When you are working for anybody, you are not a vendor. You are working for the king of kings. So you've got to serve completely until the work is done and it is done well. Some people say, well, I've done my best, which leads me to the next point. No, your best may not be enough. You've got to serve excellently. Excellently. What that means, you do what is required and even go a little bit above what is required. I know some of you might have traveled or you've gone to uh, businesses or done transactions in businesses where they give you this survey. They ask you, did we meet your expectations? Or did we not meet your expectations? Or did we perform above your expectations? My dear friend, as a child of God, when you serve, you should serve in a way that people can say that you served above expectations. You served above expectations. Don't let all your, your, your businesses, your interactions be transactional. Okay, dependent on the amount of money I get, I will do just exactly what I think I am being paid. No, my friend, the great reward that is God. And as far as God is concerned, God never owes anyone. In fact, this is the way the Bible puts it. It says, he said, uh, he said, um, God is not unrighteous in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. He said, God is not unrighteous to overlook your labor of love, seeing that you minister and you continue to minister to the saints. In, he, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, it says, Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as long as you know that your labor is not in vain. You will reap if you do not faint, my friend. 
You will reap if you do not serve in subpar manner, in ways that are substandard. You serve and you serve well. You serve excellently. Do you see a man who is diligent in his ways? Do you see a man who excels in his work? A man who serves excellently in his work. The time will come when that day God will raise you up to stand before kings and not before mean men. My dear friend, these are some of the things I want us to talk about this evening as we try to wrap up this conversation. I want you, if you want to move into a place of great association, you must learn how to serve diligently. You must learn how to serve faithfully. You must learn how to serve with excellence. You must learn how to serve completely. You must learn how to serve zealously. When you do that, oh, come on, God will open the doors for you in your time. He will open the doors for you in your season and He will put you where you should be. Now, one more thing before we... We get into conversation. There are some of you who, in your serving, you have not, you've served under difficult uh, uh, associates, difficult bosses, or you have served with rigor, like the children of Israel. They were serving at that time in Exodus chapter 1, when a king that did not know Joseph arose, they were serving with rigor. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus that you will not serve with rigor, that when you serve, you will enjoy your labor and you will eat of the fruit of your labor. And you will praise the Lord because God will ensure that you enjoy what you do. And ultimately, he will bless you beyond your wildest imagination. Uh, my friend, we're going to go into a conversation right now. But let, let's pray before we do that. Uh, Father, we pray and we thank you tonight. I pray that, Lord, you will stir our hearts and you will help us to discuss in ways that will provoke us, challenge us, and help us to grow in you. We thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.